Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about the Netflix documentary Dancing for the Devil Part One. Listen here, I need y'all to subscribe, like, share. We about to talk about cults, y'all. Mm-hmm. We about to talk about cults. It's a three part documentary, so this gonna be a three part video. I hope. You yes. know, depending if we get through this kind of fast in the first part, we may do part two. Okay. But you ready, Blair? Yes. Let's get into it. So we are with the Willing Sisters. Yeah. Uh, so it's Melanie and Miranda, and they both danced since they were very, very young. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2022, Miranda cut off all ties with her family and friends um, from before she joined a church called Shekinah Church in Los Angeles, California. That's always a church. So we're initially um, seeing kind of before everything gets started, um, which is kind of a you could call it like a fast forward mm-hmm. um, for, out this, for the story. The parents drive up to the property of the Shekinah church and it's closed to the public. Mm. What church is closed to the public? Mm. <laughs> well, the parents ring the doorbell looking for their daughter, Miranda, and they don't get a response. That's crazy. in itself. So. their texts are not getting delivered. Robert Shin, the pastor says that they are getting attention from media because of Amanda's um, Miranda's parents going to social media mm-hmm. saying that she was in a dance cult. Mm. So the dance cult was called 7M. Miranda posted a video saying that she just needed to work out some issues with her family and everything was fine. Mm. Well, rewind. (laughs) The parents said the kids were surrounded by love growing up. Yeah. Melanie is the younger sister Mm -hmm. and worked hard to be like her sister Miranda. Mm. And L.A. was the place for dancing. So Miranda went to California to pursue dancing. Crazy, right? Melanie ended up moving to California to be with Miranda to do tours and audition. They were told that they couldn't audition together, though, because they were two separate people. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> come on now. Be real now. OK. Yeah. Um, and that's when they created their YouTube channel called the Wilking Sisters so mm-hmm. they could do their dancing together. Have you ever heard of them before this documentary? Never. People mm-hmm. said that they their um their growth really happened during the pandemic. Oh. And I'm like, I was home during the pandemic. I ain't see y'all yeah. at, at all. I was watching other things. I was trying to keep up with verses. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're black. Yeah, okay. So their online dancing became really popular on TikTok, like you said, during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And they were able to get booked as sisters based off of their social media presence. Mm. Now, uh, back in 2019, uh, they got a DM from this guy named B Dash, mm-hmm. also James, who's a talented dancer. So they collaborated with him. Um, they had a group chat with the three of them, with Melanie, Miranda, and James. Mm-hmm. And then Melanie got removed from the group chat mm. because James was shooting a shot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and him and Miranda started dating. Um, Miranda would then hang out with all of his friends. That's that's the first red flag to me. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna treat my sister wrong. Yeah, you know, the one that wanted to come to auditions with me and, and audition as one person when we're two. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna treat my sister wrong, but let's continue. Yeah, and there's like multiple people in the video. Um, there's this guy Concrete who yeah. met a girl, Ali- uh, Kalia, and they were in a relationship, or I'm not sure if they're in a relationship or not together, but he met this girl. Isaiah was a videographer, mm-hmm. and they were all um, making content together. Yeah, so Isaiah's dad was a pastor. Mm. Aubrey, or which is one of the guys, started going to Bible study with every day, which was like three hours long. Mm-hmm. And um, folks were happy to go to social media to make money for their art. Okay. Mm-hmm. Robert created Robert Shin, the pastor, ended up creating Seven M Management Company mm-hmm. um, because he wanted to be able to capitalize off of all the dancers and then basically coming to him with their issues about not getting booked and mm-hmm. having all these problems when when trying to start their careers in L.A. Yeah. So all their friends were in it. Miranda was spending a lot of time at Isaiah's doing Bible study and also dancing. Mm-hmm. So we get to fall 2020. Melanie was invited to Robert's house for dinner Mm. and she was excited to go because, you know, her sister had been hanging out with them and she was going to get to know them. And it was kind of a big deal to get invited to Robert's house. But it was really weird because it wasn't a regular dinner party. Oh, man. (laughs) Everyone was really quiet at the dinner table and the vibe was off. Mm. So uh, Robert asked Melanie if she considered herself a sinner. Mm. And he says, what if I told you you've sinned a thousand times today? And if you die right now, you go to hell. I say you go to hell, too. But we'll help you. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> so so Robert is the savior. Okay. Well, they sat in a circle and held hands. Mm-hmm. He sat in the middle and laid hands on her head. Mm-hmm. Everyone was speaking in tongues. Now, uh-huh. finish off this story because I have a lot to say after this story. Uh huh. Then he said that she was saved. Oh, okay. Melanie was wanting to be there because she would do everything with her sister. Mm -hmm. Miranda joined the church to be with James. Uh, Miranda's mom asked what was up with all the dinners because it just didn't seem normal. normal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the mom just thought that they wanted something from her. Now, start right here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. Yeah. What are your thoughts so far on on, on what you hear? It's already weird. Mm. (laughs) It's already weird. Now... Why is my pastor creating a management company for my hopes and dreams? To me, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody would think, oh, he really cares a lot about his parishioners or like his congregation. You're fine. And he's going above and beyond and look at this amazing guy. But I'm just like, I just feel like you're trying to make money off of me. Mind I feel you, dirty. Mind you, it's one thing if you already had the company. Uh-huh. But once you figure that, that I can pop lock and do all the <laughs> things and things of that nature, uh-huh. you like... Oh, I'm gonna create a company to basically help. Yeah, I don't think so. You see, see, let me give you just a little backstory, right? We're Christians, mm. so I can recognize red flags off of um, just little things, such as simple as telling people all flat, "You're going to hell." I'm like, well, dude, you got to hell to put somebody in because you can't tell me I'm going to hell, right? Right. Um, First of all, my name is Chris, before you even tell me where I'm going. Mm. Um, also, just a simple fact that um, I think we're going to learn about it later on, but he learned how to like preach or to be a pastor. He kind of leaned and learned from like black churches. Mm. So he kind of learned how to like really dig into that being ca- being charismatic. Charismatic, it's charismatic. Like being, ca- being charismatic mm-hmm. and trying to be a basically a puppet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's, it's very interesting that he's at this dinner, which is basically a recruitment uh, 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 meeting. Pretty much. And you tell me, what if I told you that you said a thousand times? I'd be like, and the thing about it, if you're not grown up in church, like those are things that you normally hear from other like Christians and stuff like that. They point out your sin first. But if you're not used to that. It would kind of catch you off guard because even if you're not a Christian, you would be like, I don't want to go to hell. You know, that that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So, like, I could imagine she was just stumped. She was like, well, okay. Mm. And then and when somebody say they want to pray for you, not a lot of times people have the heart to say, no, thank you. Because prayer is not supposed to be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But it, it's a bad thing when it has bad intentions as Robert have throughout uh, this whole documentary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Robert was telling a lot of the dancers he could make them rich. Mm. He would give the management finances, a car and a home they can stay in for $2,000 a month. Mm. To me, that sound like the devil promising you the riches of the world. I mean, come on. <laughs> I was like, it sounds too good to be true. And the it funny sounds thing too about good it, to be true. These people not, these people didn't grow up Christian. Yeah. So like they just, they are more concerned with their desire to dance and desire to be successful. California, you know, the place where dreams basically live or die hard, you know? Yeah. So they just automatically thinking like nothing else been working. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like supposed to be a man of God. Okay, let's try your way. Yeah. So apparently you have to be invited to the church services. Red flag number two. You can't just go. Mm. Uh, Robert's daughter, Chloe, apparently called Melanie one day and said that, okay, you need to come to service today and hear the word. Mm -hmm. Melanie had to go pick up her friend from the airport. And Chloe was just like, just send her an Uber. Like, you have to be at church today immediately. Hurry up and get here. Wow. And Melanie was just like, that's when I decided I wasn't going back. Because no church have I ever been to Mm. where people that rush to get me into a service. Like, Like, what is like the hoopla about? Mm. So that definitely would have made me think like, what is going on? Number oh. one, to be invited to a service. So, not, so the word's not for everybody. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, for y'all, it's for y'all's chosen people. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just like, yeah. First of all, mm-hmm. the first question I would ask is, are y'all giving out money? Mm-hmm. No, I see y'all next Sunday. I got to pick up my friend from the airport. That's just, it's, 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 it's trying to isolate you from your everyday life experience. Right. Yeah. And it's so funny because I wondered when they was retelling this documentary, do they feel stupid because the signs is so like glaring to them that it's like, yeah, I shouldn't have went or I shouldn't have went back, you know? Yeah. Well, apparently we learned the breakdown. Oh, 
So it was a 20% management fee. Which is kind of normal. It's kind of on the high end, but it's still normal. 10% tithe. Oh, wait a minute. 10% offering. Wait a minute. 10% man of God. And I had to ask you, what is man of God, Chris? Because I wasn't, I wasn't raised in the church. I'm yeah. a Christian and I'm going now. But I was like, what is a man of God offering? I've never heard a of that man, before. A man of God offering is basically when the church just give a, a blessing to the preacher. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just a man of God. Because there's an assumption that the tithe doesn't go to him. Okay. The offering doesn't go to him. But, like, we are basically blessing him, man of God, you know? Yeah. But the thing about the man of God uh, offering is not supposed to be a absolute percentage, basically. It's not supposed to be like, oh, it's supposed to be 10%. It's supposed to be like an offering. Like, you know what? Thank you, Blair, for this review. You know, here's $20, you know? Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be, oh. right? Um, but he broke it down to where it's 20, 20% management to where he owns, mm-hmm. tithe. An offering, which is his church, and then a man of God, and he's making it mandatory. Mm -hmm. So that's already 50% that is coming out of whatever they bring in on top of 30% taxes. Yeah. So that's 80% of their money gone before they even get to touch it. Yeah. That doesn't even make sense. No. But, hey. But a lot of the dancers were seeing the blessings um, that were coming, I guess, different job opportunities mm-hmm. and things coming their way, more followers mm-hmm. and views on their videos. So they just thought that Robert knew what was best. And here's the thing about it. When it came to the management part, oh, he was a genius. Mm-hmm. Hey, dance to old music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, like dance to this style, wear suits, dance here and things like that. And it kind of leads me to ask you, Blair, how dangerous do you think? like just TikTok or social media is because if I'm not getting the money, yeah. right, but I'm getting the followers and I'm getting the attention on social media and that's making me feel good, I'm like, how how deep are you into the social media game to where you're like, oh, well, at least I got a million followers. At least I have this many I likes. I mean, that's dangerous because, number one, like you think that you're reaching a goal, yeah. but your life situations are not changing. At you're all. You're still 100% relying on Robert <laughs> for your well-being mm-hmm. and for you to be fed and clothed and housed. But because you guys are doing numbers, you mm-hmm. think that you're doing something. Yeah. It's just like it's a fake... Um, achievement Mm -hmm. to me i mean i appreciate y'all subscriptions uh, (laughs) and y'all's views on our videos and i think that is an achievement of itself but if the money isn't going in your pocket or Mm -hmm. if you're not seeing the growth of your community that you're trying to build it's all a fallacy yeah so you basically got monopoly money pretty much Mm -hmm. well it's january 2021 Mm -hmm. the grandpa died Oh, my goodness. R.I.P. Granddad. So Miranda calls, says that she has COVID. She can't go to the funeral. Mm. 30 minutes before they were heading to the airport. Mm. Melanie knew that this has nothing to do with COVID. She talked to Miranda about it. And Miranda started breaking down crying because Mm. she knows she lied. Of course she is. So Melanie catches the flight to head back home. Uh, They were calling and texting Miranda, getting no responses. They Mm -hmm. even ended up calling the police to do a wellness check on her. Mm -hmm. The police said they found her. Everything looks fine. They talked to her. She was coherent. And she was there with her friend, Chloe, Mm -hmm. the pastor's daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the parents actually flew out to try to get her to come. Yeah. And she was saying that she needed to ask someone closer to God than y'all if she can go. Closer to God than her parents. Remember, God gave you to us yeah like i said and even today not to fast forward but i know y'all know now she's still in it Mm -hmm. she and guess what she everybody follow her i i I wonder what her situation is now that means like she's really deep 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 in it because even then people was leaving but she the fact that she was with the pastor's daughter she's like very in the fibers of of this cult church or like whatever it is yeah well romance um, what's her name? Miranda was dying to herself. Yeah. Robert said that you have to die to your family in order to save them, mm-hmm. as in them going to heaven one day. And if you get into heaven, then they'll be able to come with you. Mm. So Robert, like this is not a Bible based church, y'all. No. <laughs> this is a Robert based church. No. So Kevin was told to die to his son, mm-hmm. which was another dancer, and he said that he couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. They didn't care if he never saw his family ever again. And I was just like, when they were, when he was talking about his child and they were showing pictures and everything like that, Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't tell me you cut off your baby. And and no, he didn't. So thank goodness. No, the funny thing about it is all of this is church lingo, Mm -hmm. like dying to yourself 
it's basically a it's a parable or basically it's an allegory it's a metaphor for um basically like whatever your evil desires is e the desires of the flesh you should live uh from the spirit and not the flesh right but when you have somebody who is not from church and who have a grown up in church and they say how do i do that you kind of start to debunk that that theology right because if you grow up in church you hear it all the time so it's a learned it's a learned saying that you think you understand, but no one actually had the courage to say, how do I do that? Or what do that mean? Mm -hmm. Of course, in Christianity, there is something to where it's like you're supposed to like basically discipline your flesh in the sense of not hitting it. But basically, like, you know, like we all taught that we sin and, and that basically we have desires and things like that, that we're supposed to basically, you know, have control of those things, you know, to be good people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he's saying things in the sense of cut off your son. What? Cut off your parents. What? Like that? That is not biblical. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And my thing is, if you're caught up in the social media likes, if you're caught up in the money that you think you're getting, it kind of puts you in the position of, well, you know, I'm saving them because if I cut them off, they get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, y'all so blind that y'all don't even like see like basically what's in front of you. Yeah. You know? So eventually, uh, Miranda gets married. Of course. Family found out about it through social media. Oh, man. Well, there was another dancer in the group. His name was Nick Reno. Mm -hmm. And the parents got an email from Miranda's parents about the issues they were having about the church and their child. Mm -hmm. So uh, Miranda just reached out to the other parents because she didn't know what else to do. Of course not. So what they end up doing is calling the human trafficking hotline and explaining the situation. Yeah. So because their children are adults, there's a limit as far as what they can do because mm -hmm. they can only step in if those adults are asking for help. Yeah. And they say that um, pretty much the police can only get involved um, if they say that they want to be helped personally. Mm hmm which sucks. And it's funny because mm -hmm. they was asking them, well, since you can't do nothing, what do you expect us to do? Like, like we know something is happening. What do you want us to do? They say, usually just keep an open line of communication, right? Just keep an open line of communication because you don't want to press things too much to where you don't have that open line of communication to yeah. where now you can't have, now you're like kind of like Miranda's family yeah. to where you find things on social media. And then there is a blurred line of if you push too much, you kind of put them in harm. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that would be hard for me as a parent, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's no gate that I can't scale, mm -hmm. you know? So if I were to put up to that church and there's a gate there, I'd be like, unless there's barbed wire on top of it. Right. I'm hopping the fence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I understand it, but it's kind of... you Your hands is tied because your child is an adult, as you said. And you hope that you raise them to basically like make their own decisions to make their sound decisions. But you don't really raise them to not join a cult because no one wants to join a cult willingly. Right. Everybody who's in a cult don't think they're in a cult. Yeah. So it's like your hands is tied. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to keep the lines of communication open with Miranda, mm -hmm. but the emails that they were getting from her weren't structured correctly, like in the way that she would normally talk. Mm. She also wasn't sending any type of happy birthday wishes or reaching out during the holidays. Mm. Well, uh, one time uh, Melanie went to the public show that the 7M group was doing. Mm -hmm. She saw her sister in the bathroom. They hugged, but to her, it was like hugging a wall. Wow. Like it was like a shell of her sister. She had no emotion. She completely had changed. Mm. Well, the parents were told by a therapist that they would probably talk if you had something big to share. Mm. So they texted James, Miranda's husband, mm -hmm. and they... Uh, Pretty much that we have big news and we need Miranda to come here so we can talk to her. So she ends up coming and the mom apologized for Miranda not feeling comfortable enough to come to them. Mm -hmm. And Miranda is like, is that it? And then she leaves. Wow. Her eyes were glazed over. There was no expression on her face. Like she was, like I said, a shell of herself. And that got to suck mm -hmm. because you got them to come. And it's like you still can't reach her at at what age? Do you give up on your child? I know that sounds crazy coming from a man that comes crazy from someone who don't have kids, yeah. right? But like they said, the human trafficking hotline said they are adults. Mm -hmm. At what choice, at what point rather, do you accept your child's choice? Yeah. I'm No, I'm, I'm asking you. I don't know. I mean, at what point do you accept your child's choice? Um, 
I feel like you got to try. You have to try to talk to them. You mm-hmm. got to try to talk them out of it. But if it's in Miranda's case where she's persistent on staying where she's at. Very persistent. Then I think you do just have to get in where you fit in. Now, as we f- figure out or basically more discussions down the road mm-hmm. about Kyle, they're just kind of like n- avoiding conversations about what mm-hmm. she's in. I'm absolutely not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're around me and I have the the chance to talk to you and communicate with you, like I'm talking to you about the biggest issue in your life and trying to save you. Mm-hmm. And if you want to cut me off because of that, that's your decision. Exactly. But I'm not going to stop trying. So you realize mm-hmm. that when the father uh, was looking for their daughter, he had the piece where she was based off of the background in their videos. Yeah. Bro, you got to accept her choice. If mm. I'm over here playing detective of saying like, okay, she's by a telephone pole. How many telephone poles is in this region? It's like after a while, it's like now my life is about to like be affected by it big time. Yeah. And if I'm calling her over, my mom, um, not my mama, your mom over here apologizing, crying and things like that. Your sister trying to hug you and you're a wall. I'm over here trying. I'm talking to an intercom. Mm-hmm. After a while, I'm sorry. I'm giving up. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? You're an adult, and I love you enough to accept whatever decision you made. Mm-hmm. I see you at the funeral. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 like. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. basically that. To me, that's what love is. Mm-hmm. At least, because you have to. Lo- I love you. I love myself too. You want me to accept this choice. So I'm going to accept it. Okay. You know what I mean? You better not call me for anything. <laughs> like, I'm telling you this right now. I mean, not nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Melanie, she's still online trying to make things seem like they just took a break mm-hmm. and, Miranda, and Miranda just needed some time. Mm-hmm. But everything is just going to garbage. Of course. Miranda's birthday, James ended up making a post. Melanie commented on it, on it wishing her happy birthday. Her post was deleted and wow. she was blocked. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a parent. Wow. So the parents and Melanie come online. They do this live to try to fight for Miranda. Yeah. So James ends up coming on social media saying that the real issue is that the parents didn't like that she was marrying a black guy. That's an easy. Let's see here. I don't know what I would believe at that point. If I was keeping up with it at the time, I would have been like, <laughs> I, I see you black man. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's, I was like, it'd be like that sometimes. It's so convenient. Yeah. You're right. It's so convenient. Mm-hmm. It's so convenient. Well, Miranda went live with her husband and her parents. Mm. And basically she wanted to record the conversation that they were going to have because she did a meetup with them. Mm -hmm. And um, basically she asked her parents to take down their videos on social media. And her mom said no. Of course. So that was another riff in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So the dancers were called into service. Mm -hmm. Robert had everybody sign NDAs at that point. That's red. Listen, I don't know if that's red flag number 77. Because mm-hmm. there's no church the way you have to sign an NDA. If yeah. you have to sign an NDA at a church, leave the church. Yeah. That's what the best way for me not to say anything, I won't be part of this church. Exactly. I'm not signing an NDA for nothing. So with the Miranda's parents coming out on live and kind of getting the balls, ro- the ball rolling, mm-hmm. people started coming out and talking about their experiences. Mm. Um, there were private meetings with the pastor where some of the dancers were separated from others um, who were there from like 30 plus years. Wow. They never knew how the members of the church were treated, like the members that were there before the dancers got there. Mm-hmm. Um, when they started sharing their stories, people could see, OK, like there is a lot of weird stuff happening here. Mm. And then that is the point they started to feel like, okay, yeah, we're in a cult. Yeah. So then we're introduced to Melanie Lee, who was a former Shekinah member. Mm -hmm. And she was um, with Shekinah for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, Looking at all the social media posts, she was shocked to see that Robert was still around. Wow. That's where they end part one. What is your thoughts so far in just part one of Dancing for the Devil? Mm -hmm. What is your thoughts, Blair? Um, My thoughts... It does seem glaringly obvious that this was a cult, especially with the secret of services, then the NDAs and <laughs> the NDAs um, would have been it for me. And then making like every kind of meeting like an urgent situation. Like uh, but the thing is, like they talk about further on, it's just like they get people in vulnerable positions mm-hmm. who want to feel part of something. Mm-hmm. And and it just sucks to be used and abused because you want to be loved. So Yeah, I mm-hmm. wonder I wish we had more backstory on 
Miranda. Miranda's the one that's in the cult, right? Yes. Because it's of course she joined this church, but it all started with a guy. Yeah. Right? I wonder because she was so close to her sister, almost inseparable, how was their dating life like before like all this happened? Is this her first boyfriend? Is this her first real relationship to where she feels like, oh, I found love. I got to throw everything into it. Mm-hmm. And now a marriage or now a relationship turned into a marriage would turn into basically a business partner because they still dance together, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I really wonder what was the psyche of when this guy came into basically when she first met this guy. Yeah. Because that, that plays a big part on the psyche too. When you really like somebody or, or you fall in love with somebody, Oh, 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 yeah, of course. I should go to your church. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, of course. I join your management company. Oh, yeah, of course. And the whole time, he's a recruiter. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's it's, it's tricky. We go come back with part two and three. Anything else? That's it. Y'all be good. Bye.